I like big books, and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. I've seen a lot of anti-feminist YouTubers do videos where they analyze the political philosophy books which have influenced the social justice whiner mindset, like The Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx, Rules for Radicals by Saul Alinsky, The Feminist Mystique by Betty Friedan, or Feminism is for Everybody by Bell Hooks. But I've rarely seen anyone do a video where they recommend idea books which they actually like to provide an alternative political philosophy. You've got to have a positive political philosophy. You can't beat something with nothing. And the SJWs have got something. It's something stupid, but something stupid beats nothing. So, the plan here is for me to gush about my favorite 20th century idea books for a few minutes. As a Latter-day Saint, I am obligated to always recommend the Book of Mormon, of course, but here I am focusing on works of political philosophy, not theology. And I, of course, do not endorse every word of these books that I recommend. The gist is what matters, and how they drive you to think and question your assumptions, not drive you to automatically accept every word they say. I think their purpose would be defeated if you treated them that way. So, here are my top five idea books to stop the SJWs. Number five, Ideas Have Consequences by Richard Weaver. This book traces how the consequences of the idea of nominalism in the Middle Ages led to the rise of moral relativism and the extremist political movements that have caused the world so much trouble. It's sort of an intellectual history or survey of the history of ideas. Number four, the Closing of the American Mind by Alan Bloom. This is an attack on American academia and its abandonment of classical liberal arts education. It discusses how raising a generation that is no longer familiar with the great books of the Western world can only result in an impoverished intellectual community, which we've got, and a cynical, worthless, nihilistic culture, which we've also got. The author was a homosexual liberal, but this book consistently appears on lists of books recommended by Christian social conservatives like myself, because we are, contrary to popular belief, much less prone to the ad hominem fallacy than are our opponents. Bloom's arguments are what matter, not his personal vices or his views on unrelated subjects. However, I would like to distance myself from his ignorant diatribe against rock music. His moral evaluation of the data that he had may have had some validity, but he simply does not have all the data. He did not research that part enough. His contention that rock music is always necessarily intellectually vacuous is refuted by the existence of progressive rock as a genre. Ignoring that part, I tend to agree with most of the rest of his main points, and that part is relatively short compared to the rest of the book. So, cut that part out, but pay attention to the rest of the book because it is great. Number three. This will probably be the most controversial entry. Men and Marriage by George Gilder decries the socio-economic consequences of the sexual revolution, arguing that civilization depends on women's ability to civilize men by turning them into fathers, so that a political ideology like feminism, which tries to force reversed gender roles, is a recipe for societal suicide. In a nutshell, children and family are what really counts in life, while in contrast, feminism is a recipe for women to end up dying sad and alone in a house full of cats. Number 2. Lost in the Cosmos, The Last Self-Help Book by Walker Percy. This unique cross-genre work, which is a satire on self-help books, not an endorsement of them, by the way, presents the reader with a series of questions, which, while never coming out and directly making the point, 
rhetorically demonstrate the inherent instability of modern philosophy. It shows us how none of our explanations, neither the secular nor the religious ones, are adequate to address the feeling of alienation that is widely acknowledged to be the near-universal hallmark of modern life. It's like Socrates, constantly teaching through asking questions. Lost in the Cosmos is divided into three sections, and while it interested me personally, the middle section can be skipped by most readers because it is only of interest to phenomenologists and those interested in philosophy of language. One need not adopt Walker Percy's specific views on the finer points of the philosophy of language to get his fundamental point, which is about ethics. The third part turns into a science fiction epic. So this book is part fiction, part nonfiction, part academic, part parody, part everything. You don't want to miss this one. It's hard to describe, but it's awesome. Before I give my number one book to stop the SJWs, I'd like to have an honorable mention that just barely didn't make the list. That would be Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. This is a dystopian novel that describes the way we are headed. Brave New World is much more true to life than George Orwell's 1984. 1984 assumes that the tyrannical future state will be able to maintain power only by suppressing human wants and desires. But in reality, no government which did that would be able to hold power for very long, because people will not allow the government to get in the way of the things they really want. To wield real power involves giving the people exactly what they want. The deeper philosophical point that Brave New World makes is that we want the wrong things. It shows what life will be like when there is an indefinite number of sexual preferences but people no longer understand what marriage is. So, essentially, it describes life in the not-too-distant future should current trends continue. Brave New World is the scariest and most subtle of all the great 20th century dystopian novels because it clearly is a dystopia, but most people would be hard-pressed to describe exactly why it is a dystopia. Because it seems to be giving us everything we want. And that is the scariest thing of all. Number one, The Abolition of Man by C.S. Lewis is the ultimate philosophy essay against moral relativism and moral anti-realism. But I've already done an entire video series on The Abolition of Man, so there's really no point in going over it again here. Watch my old videos. I might mention that it's definitely worth looking into The Abolition of Man's companion novel, That Hideous Strength, which is the book I think most deserves to be adapted into a movie. So, those are my favorite anti-SJW idea books. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe for more videos.